Good day, Gary. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this uh, video interview with me today over Zoom. For our audience, can you give us a little bit of your background in the learning and development world, and in particular, leadership development? Yeah, I've been doing leadership. I've been doing I've been doing L and D talent development. Gosh, for more than twenty years now. Started with small company, well, large companies. Now that I'm thinking about Arthur Anderson, Johnson Controls, Ceridian, Fidelity Information Services, Lowe's Home Improvement. I've been doing tech talent development all throughout that. And I've always had an interest in leadership development at some level, but that's the area that I've been working on the last few years. Like a lot of people who go into management, they may not spend too much time thinking about leadership, but it's only after, I saw a study recently, it's only about seven or eight years into it, they start really focusing on what leadership is and how they can do a better job and improve how they can support their people and uh, in that area. The, gosh, the last six years of, of my career, I've been doing consulting. And about five years ago, I did a research project where I analyzed 14 leadership books written in the 21st century, one that was in 1998. So it was one off. But it was really about how leadership is changing, and that became the source of my book, Nine Practices of 21st Century Leadership. So I've had a lot of focus on leadership, leadership development, helping companies with that. And I've also been working with companies with helping their HR departments just be better business partners for the business side and better contributors to the bottom line. You see, I got a cat with me. It, it <laughs> so, will happen in every video. So is leadership uh, development like herding cats? Oh, that was just my joke. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it okay, is, so, so you didn't mention your what the heck book. So mention your what the heck book. Yeah. Last year during the pandemic, I put together a slightly different book than the first one, nine, the Nine Practices book, which looks a little bit more academic. This one is a lot shorter. It's about, a, I don't know, 100, 120 pages or something like that. But there's about 50 stories about leadership in there. And the whole focus is on seven things that people should use as their guiding principles. And the stories in there are incredible. They're short. They're ver There's an audio book that goes with it, but it's all based on the research that I did previously. Well, thank you for that uh, introduction here. So let's now move to the uh, main event. So uh, there's a leadership development white paper that uh, you put online here just a, just a short while ago here. And so can you explain to the audience uh, what is it and who is it for and who wrote it? Yeah. Last summer, I started teaching as an adjunct professor at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte for the Department of Educational Leadership. I started teaching a leadership management course. And in that course, I had 22 graduate students, nine doctoral students. The rest were graduate students or master degree students. And I had them all, I, it started out as an assignment. I had them interview professionals that did leadership development. And we had standard questions. We had nine questions with some sub questions under a couple of them. They all asked the same thing. And the, some interviewed more than one. There was 24 total of these L, LD experts, I'll call them LD short for leadership development. And after the course was over, I decided that this would be a good opportunity to publish this, but have it so that the students are the authors. And I wanted to give them an opportunity to have something on their CVs or resumes where they actually had something published before they completed their master's program, certificate program, or doctoral program and something that would actually make a contribution. So I went to the IRB, which is the research board, 
that for the university and ask them if I could take non-research data and apply it to research for secondary purposes. And they, they approved it. I had to get consent, of course, from the 24 people. They all gave consent. And that became the white paper. So it was 24 LD experts. Some were business owners. Some worked in L&D departments, talent development departments. Some were contractors. Some were coaches. There were a couple of keynote speakers that did this professionally and high-end ones too. Uh, They have 521 combined years of experience in leadership development, and they their experience ranged from seven to 50 years with an average of 22 years of experience. And the paper is out. It's, I don't know, it's probably about 25 pages, but it's not dense pages, but there's some interesting insights that came out of that, of those interviews that may help some people in leadership development as they go through both professionally as, as practitioners, but also it might help researchers as well. Excellent. Well, thanks for that. Um, I will be uh, sure to provide uh, the URL in the uh, YouTube show notes so that people can go access that. But can you kind of walk us through this and share with us some of the highlights of the white paper? Yeah. And by the way, the department was very supportive. I I should mention that on getting this paper published. And they said, publish it wherever you like. So it is now published on one site, the HPT Treasures website which has, I think you might be familiar with it, it has more than 600 resources available about leader, about performance improvement and human performance uh, technology, the HPT part of it. And would you say, I I would say about what, 150, 200 videos from practitioners? Yeah, I think when when we add up the videos that I have and Alex Salas has and George Gu has, we're probably close to 300 videos, I'm guessing. It's, it's, a, it's a, a large number of, but we're linking to YouTube videos. And so they're all freely accessible to everybody. Yeah. So tell yeah, us more exactly. about this white paper now. What the, how, what's, it, what's it contain? Yeah. So I mentioned, I mentioned the audience, the, the, the interviewees, the 24 professionals, leadership development professionals. And what I wanted to do is have the students find out from them their thoughts about what leadership development is, what are the challenges, what are the things that people do well, um, and what makes good leadership development interventions. So I had them ask them, what is leadership development? And the, the common answer was leadership development is the development of leaders. And yeah, that's redundant. And that's not how you're supposed to define it. But that's kind of like trying to define leadership is difficult to do, but they've said some things that were pretty cool. One said they think of LD as a journey. It's not a one-time event. It's about understanding how to strip away someone's limiting beliefs and empower, imparting and impart the empowering ones, if I could say that right. And it's about helping leaders or managers, supervisors build high-performing teams to help meet the organizational goals by strengthening their leadership skill set and giving them tools to be able to do that more effectively. And another way they described it was it's about helping them remove barriers. And then this was interesting, removing themselves from taking away attention from the people they work with giving them room to be creative and not block their creativity. So that's kind of like how they define LD. And then I asked them, or I didn't ask them the 22 students that they asked, what are the things that prevent people from doing leadership development? Why don't they do it? The biggest answer is they don't have the, first, they don't have the knowledge and skills in the first place, but their biggest barrier is time. They're busy. They're trying to run the business. It's not a priority for them. And um, the other thing is that was interesting is that they found that a lot of professionals don't like receiving feedback. 
and they just assume what they do works. And sometimes people don't want to be coached. They don't think they're the problem and they don't think that they need to improve. So those are like some of the barriers. What, what I, what they did, what they, the students then focused on is what are some typical interventions and guy, you'll appreciate this. If we, we asked them, what are the typical intervention goals? And they said pretty much unanimously or closely unanimously, it depends, <laughs> which is <laughs> yeah. like, it, it's situational. You, you, it, and so the, the message is very interesting. If you do leadership development and you do what we call a technical term is cookie cutter interventions where you just plug it in and have them do it. It's not that effective. It's not as effective as it could be. It really needs to be based on business needs and those types of drivers. The other thing that that came out is that the one day workshop, the huge uh, put everyone in a, in a room for an hour and a half, two hours. That is a thing of the past, although it's still happening, but it, companies, they have money, they can do it. But what they found is if you really want to make a difference, you have a long-term process where there may be a series of six to eight interventions, some of it in person, some of it asynchronous, and you incorporate coaching in that as well as you get the learner's manager involved in supporting the whole process. So one person described it as, as at the beginning, they would do surveys and interviews to understand how to tailor the training to meet the organizational needs. They start off with some pre-reads, e-learnings, and then they do a experiential set of workshops and then follow it up with two or three coaching sessions with each of the participants. So it's moving away from all in person to having as much as possible being asynchronous, but you save the in-person for reinforcing the learning objectives and, and help them practice and develop their, their particular skills. Thank you. So what, so what would you suggest to our audience? Uh, you know, they may be, have interest in this or they may know of somebody, but uh, you know, what's, what's the hook? What, what's in it for the, the reader of this white paper? Yeah, a small audience is going to be researchers because it's a qualitative study, which means it's not generalizable to a population outside of these 24 LD experts. Another thing is that if you're in learning and development, talent, de talent development, and you do leadership, you might want to look at this paper to find out some, there's, there's more barriers they talk about, what makes it difficult to, um, to do these types of interventions, what gets in the way of it, uh, but also about what works and what's effective. So that you, I think it's a good, it's a nice summary of some insights about what's going on and it may validate, it may, that may be the big thing is uh, it may validate of what, a lot of people know, for example, technology has been a game changer because of the pandemic. Uh, leadership development, it requires a lot of um, uh, skill development, but there's a lot that you could do with live streaming. There's a lot that you can do behind the scenes and a hybrid approach is probably something that's pretty important to do, but also if you have leadership development programs, the traditional ones that you take people out, out of the workforce for a week, those may not be the most effective, but also it, you could learn a little bit more about what makes an effective leadership development program versus a one-time course. So I noticed that there was a long list of references at the end of this white paper. What, where did those come from? Are those part of the class that you taught or... Yeah, yeah, it was. There was a part of the white paper that I was going to incorporate, and that is I had the graduate, the doctoral students do a mini literature review. And it, it, I, I called it, it wasn't extensive. They collected, oh, maybe about 40 different sources or so. And 
I was going to include their summaries of those those um, resources, but it just didn't fit in the white paper. It was starting to get too long. So instead, I listed these that the students I read and identified and thought were important. So there's some aspects of the white paper that are not included, including something called action learning, which they found is very important. And there's a lot more talk about psychological safety, both, both in terms of it's important to have psychological safety as a manager with your team and within teams, but also having psychological, psychological safety for the learning interventions themselves so that the participants, the learners feel comfortable to be able to try things out and take risks without negative consequences. Great, thank you. Uh, before we wrap up here, uh, take a moment here to, you've already, we've already talked about your two books and I understand that you're getting ready to update the uh, Nine Practices book, but you also have a podcast. What, Tell our audience a little bit about your podcast, because I think that's right in alignment with this topic. I have started at the beginning of this year, uh, a podcast series called Unlabeled Leadership. And the concept is pretty simple. What I did is I've asked practitioners mainly, but some experts, not too many of them, to come in and talk about leadership, but without using a bunch of buzzwords. In fact, it's all about breaking down terminology and really talking about behaviors and what people could do to become better at leading, whether it's teams or companies or, or any group. And it's, it's been a fascinating journey. The, the episodes are 15 to 30 minutes long. It's, it's most of them are around the same questions. There's usually three parts in them where as you ask, what is something that someone has said that has helped you in your career, has changed your perspective, which is an example of you being led. They share an example of leading or, or when someone else is led and they provide leadership advice at the end of 100, episode 115 just recently came out. There is, uh, there's some really good stuff in there. And if you listen to them, you'll start to pick up themes about some of the guiding principles that people use when they lead. Some, they're very simple principles, but there's a lot of depth into them. And if you listen to enough episodes, it really has this compound effect where you're gaining insight into leadership that you may not have had if you were just taking a course every so often. So they're, they're fun to listen to. A lot of work goes into editing to make it sound good, and there's music involved. Um, but it's it's a lot of fun to talk with these people, and at the same time, helping people learn a little bit more about what makes effective leadership. Yes, I highly recommend uh, that people uh, put it on their uh, to do to listen uh, list. And uh, as you say, they're very short, uh, fairly short, and so it's a, it's an easy listen. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing with us uh, about uh, this white paper today and uh, the rest of the things that you're up to in leadership development. I'll uh, put the appropriate contact links in the YouTube show notes for people to connect with you on LinkedIn and to your website. And then from the web your website, they can get to your, uh, your blog and your podcast. But uh, again, thanks so much for sharing with us today. Yeah. And if anyone's interested, I have started talking with companies. I just, I'm kicking it off next year. And which means in a month from now, I'm talking with some larger companies about leadership and some of the research that has come out of it. So that's another service that I've been offering to different companies and groups. Great. Good luck with all of that. Thanks. And thank you. 